Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So today we get to take a look at the 2023 Chevrolet Colorado ZR2. Huge shout out to Randy Mary and Chevrolet for providing this midsize truck for me today. Definitely take a look at their website. That link is down in the description. So this ZR2 is finished off in harvest bronze metallic. MSRP is just over 51 grand and powering the ZR2 is the 2.7 liter high output inline four cylinder paired to that eight speed automatic transmission, pumping out 310 horsepower, 430 pound feet of torque. That power is primarily sent to the rear wheels. However, the ZR2 has the four wheel drive system. This weighs in at just under 5,000 pounds. It'll do zero to 60 in seven and a half seconds. Top speed is just shy of 100 miles an hour. It also has a fuel capacity of 21.4 gallons. You'll expect to see around 17 miles per gallon in the city, 19 out on the highway. This also has a wheelbase of 131.4 inches. Its overall length is 212.7. It has a width of 84.4, a height of 81.8, and it has an approach angle of 38.3 degrees, a breakover angle of 24.6 degrees, ground clearance also measures in at 10.7, and its departure angle is 25.1 degrees. As we move on to the exterior styling now for this ZR2, let's start off with the Floatai Chevy badge right in the middle. So this is their name for the hollow design, which also is lined in red with the chrome accent matching the ZR2 badge over on the driver's side. Provides a little bit more airflow compared to being solid, of course, where there's also another inlet at the same height as that. And then underneath, we have some more cutouts in that grill along with some slats on both sides to provide even more cooling. Now on both sides, there are some trim accents just underneath the LED headlights and DRLs. They have a very thin housing to them, which matches very nicely. And then the turn signal is also right in that intersection. And then for this ZR2, this has factory fog lights down in the lower plastic section of the bumper. There's two red tow hooks, skid plates up underneath. And as you can tell with the cutouts in the bumper, that provides it with a huge approach angle and you can see most of that tire. So taking this off-road isn't going to be an issue since you have that much more angle up front. Now up on the hood, we have a matte black section for the hood bulge to help reduce glare from the driver's seat, but it also gives it a really cool touch being the highest trim level, having that added aggress aggression for that hood. Now, as we work our way to the side, the ZR2 is fitted with 33 inch tires, wrapping a 17 inch wheel with a really nice multi-spoke design to it. And this also has that Multimatic DSSV suspension, provides it with a roughly two to three inch lift. It is noticeably higher than the previous ZR2. So you have a lot more ground clearance. You also have the rock sliders too. You can use it as a step, or of course, to provide you with extra protection when taking this off the pavement. Now the fender flares are plastic, but they have a good bulge to them to poke out a little bit farther than those tires. The gloss black mirror caps have a nice design to them. And then we have some black trim surrounding the windows. Now the ZR2 only comes in one configuration. We have the crew cab with the shorter bed. I think it has a really good side design to it with the lines in the lower section. Colorado is in the upper half there. And then there's some nice lines and bulges in the back section of this bed with ZR2. And then that side exit exhaust is nicely tucked up underneath on that passenger side. Now, as we work our way to the back, Chevrolet is stamped right in the middle, gloss black for that bumper with all these sensors, LED taillights, of course, and this can even tow right around 6,000 pounds. So it is a little bit shy compared to non-ZR2. That suspension hinders it slightly, but of course you get the added benefits to take this off-road. Now we do have remote start. So if I lock it, double tap this button, this will fire up. If you hold on that button, that's how you can shut this off if you need to. And then from there, we do have the locking tailgate. So as long as the vehicle is unlocked, we can grab that and open this up. It has the soft open tailgate, which is nice with a cool pattern on the top edge of it. There's also a ruler if you need to use that. And what's pretty cool about this tailgate is the use of space in it. Most tailgates are all hollow, so why not add a compartment where you can attach some accessories, place any recovery hooks, ropes, anything that you have with you for the day. It's a really nice spot to be able to put all of that. Now for the bed space on the ZR2, we have the full spray and bed liner, multiple tie down hooks to place in a lot of items. There's even the outlet where you can power some tools and it's a very lightweight tailgate. So it's easy to close up with one hand. Now, as we work our way to the back seats, we have a nice interior 
paired with this exterior metallic. There's yellow stitching, a little bit of storage with one speaker. We have the release handle too. And then that same two-tone works its way to these leather seats with more of the yellow stitching. Now at five foot 10, this is a pretty high step even for me. So it's, it's definitely lifted, which is nice. But once I'm in, I have plenty of space. There's storage pockets, a place for your phone, drinks, even air vents and some auxiliaries, three-prong outlet down below. Now, as far as headroom goes, this is a mid-sized truck. Usually the back space is pretty crammed. I used to own a Toyota Tacoma, and this is a little bit higher, I think. I have about an inch or so above my head, maybe an inch and a half, so I can actually sit upright. You could be a little bit taller than me and still be comfortable. So it's doable. It's a tight truck. If you want this for off-roading, it's gonna be more beneficial than a full size, and you still get that added space in the back if you need to use it. So it's a great use of space for this size. We have two cup holders and the armrest, and then the automatic, the manual sliding rear glass, you can open and close as needed. And as far as visibility goes, pickups really don't have any blind spots. So it's pretty easy to see all around. Now up front, same design of course, a little bit more storage. We have the window adjustments, even memory seating controls, which is nice. And then the large speaker, Colorado down on the door sill, and same design for these front seats. They are automatic, so we have that adjustment. Now interesting to note, there's only one grab handle on that side. We do not have one for the driver's side, which is interesting. I've seen a lot of vehicles that don't have that on the driver's side. But now that we are inside, let's fire this back up and we can go over the rest of these controls. Now we have the solid leather steering wheel. On this left side, there's cruise control settings along with distance pacing for the adaptive cruise. Right side, there's voice commands, music, heated steering wheel, and then you have a few controls for the gauge cluster setup. Now on that left side, there's miles per hour, engine temp. Right side, there's the tack, along with oil temperature, what gear you're in as well. And then right in the middle, we can use those controls to further go through some of this info. You can pull up your, musics, your music, which is a shortcut there, but if I push on the pages button, now we have the navigation screen. It's a little bright there, hopefully you can see that. Then we can go back to a different screen where we have a different configuration, which is neat to see. And then we also have this one here with pitch and roll on the left side, some vitals in the middle, steering angle, transfer case on that right side. And then we have miles per hour just by itself. And then you can pull up this info here. So it's pretty cool to go through that. You can't configure each screen, but it's nice that you have multiple screens depending on the info that you need for the day. Now on the back side, we have volume and tuning on both sides. So that way you can easily adjust that. Trailer braking system is down below with the dimmer switch for the gauges. There's one air vent too. And then take a look at the hood bulge from the driver's seat. Very slight, so you can see over it. It's not too obstructive. Bose audio right in the middle. And then we have the massive infotainment screen where we can go through a lot more info. So up on the left side, if I push on controls and safety, this is how you can get to your automatic headlights, fog lights too, hill descent, park assist, and even the power window lockout. So you actually don't have any controls for the headlights on either stock. There's only one stock on this left side for your turn signal, for your wiper blades. And so you have to go into the screen for the rest of it. Now you can pair your phone, of course. If I push on this mountain, you also have your G-force meter, steering angle transfer case that you saw in the gauge cluster setup. But you can go into terrain now, look at your pitch, your roll, your PSI for your tires and overlanding is going to show you a compass and your elevation. So it's really neat to see all of those. You can also opt for a camera or to push for the rear view. So you can pull that up as needed. There's music. And then if we go into the last one, these are the general apps that you can go through. And then one of my favorites is the air down mode. So you can actually use this, set your PSI to what you want the tires. It will also honk when your set PSI is achieved. Now you can't actually use this to air it back up, which would be really cool. You need a built-in air compressor, but it does make it a lot more easier to deflate when you are taking this off the pavement. You have Wi-Fi along with my Chevrolet too. Now underneath that, we have heated and ventilated seats, fan speed, the rest of the AC adjustments, and then the temperature dials for your driver and passenger. Two air vents are underneath that. And this does have a rear locking diff. You can lock both the front and the rear. There's the engine start stop, hazards, lane keeping assist. You have auxiliaries that you can power. You can also put all four windows down with the push of one button. It will not do it in the up position, but it's nice on a hot day like it is today. You can quickly hop in, push one button, and you are set to cool off. 
Now underneath that, wireless charging with some auxiliaries. And then with the shifter, let's put this into reverse where you saw that backup camera earlier. There's also drive and a low range gear. Now in the low range, you can use plus and minus. So you can shift off road or if you're towing, you can hold the gear, which is nice. And then this is how you can go through a few different driving modes as well as two high, four low, four high and auto. So by twisting on this dial, there's normal along with off road, there's tow and haul, terrain, we have Baja, and then back to normal. Now, we were actually able to take a Colorado off-road. Check out that video because these driving modes made a huge difference, of course, going off-road. As far as using the downhill assist control and everything like that, it was a really big difference to utilize those. E-brake is behind that. There's two cup holders with a spot for your phone. And then in the middle, we do have a tray where you can place in a lot of items as needed. And then the glove box has a good amount of space as well. Now up top, we have adjustments for the sunroof. Sunshade is manual. And then we have the rest of those controls with some OnStar buttons and a look at visibility from the driver's seat, which is very easy to see around. As we set off now behind the wheel for this Colorado ZR2, like I mentioned earlier, MSRP is just over 51 grand. Seems to be about average when you compare it to the Tacoma TRD Pro, Nissan Frontier Pro 4X. They are all in that 47 to 52, 53, thousand dollar mark depending on the options that you go with some of them do have additional options that you can spec it with so for the colorado just over 50 grand i think it's a really good option to go with and i love the fact that this has all of the off-road and goodies that you would want for a truck like this being the zr2 something that you want to take off road you pretty much don't have to do anything to it and that's what i think a lot of these manufacturers who are building off-road trucks need to cater towards. You can't just slap on an off-road sticker and call it a day. This Colorado actually has a lift. It's got 33 inch tires, a little bit larger than some of the other competitors for a stock factory tire. And you can definitely feel it. You sit very, very high up. The owner of this truck actually traded in his previous gen ZR2 for this new ZR2. And so there's a pretty good difference. I was able to see the previous gen again real quick and it's noticeable. We have also actually been able to take some of the Colorados off-road. We had an AT4 that we were able to take, a few others as well. But this ZR2 is what takes it. With that lift kit, with skid plates up underneath, this is something that the owner is going to take off-road and it's something that I would love to take off-road and really see how it performs. We won't be off-roading today. If you wanna see us taking a Colorado off-road, you can check out that video that we did. But we're on the pavement for today and with a mild acceleration, this is a quick vehicle. I know a lot of people were very hesitant when a lot of manufacturers are going towards these four cylinder turbo engines. And with 430 for the pound feet of torque, this isn't a slow truck. It definitely gets up and moves. So you have a smaller engine, a little bit more fuel efficient, can still hang with the towing capabilities as the previous engine. And so I think it's good. It does very well off-road too. That amount of torque spinning the tires when you're going off the pavement is definitely beneficial. So I can see the added benefits with getting some more power. Out on the road here, I really don't have any issues with it. Mild acceleration, we're back up to speed. Uh, so I think the power plant is really good. And driving this, even with that Multimatic suspension, it is tuned for off-road. But off-road too, it's a lot more softer than some of the other models and that's why it can't tow quite as much but it gives you the best of both worlds. It gives you that on-road performance as well as the off-road performance. So you don't have to sacrifice having a big lifted truck, stiff suspension, can't drive it on the road. It's a good blend between on-road and off-road, off -road, which I really like. And with a mild acceleration, here we go. And we're up to speed just like that with a mild acceleration. Now, the only thing that I don't like about the new engine is the exhaust note. It's not quite as beefy, of course, as some of the outgoing engines, but you could throw on an aftermarket exhaust, make it sound a little bit more beefy. Uh, not a huge deal, just a personal preference, uh, but I am getting a midsize truck that has a similar engine. So stay tuned for that and see what I do to uh, improve that sound. But for everyday daily driving, super comfortable, really not an annoyance at all. But now that we're behind the wheel, of the $50,000 ZR2. We have that badge over there. Really cool design. I don't think I pointed out earlier on that airbag cover. 
but this is a nice truck. It sits very high when you compare it to some other trucks. And I really don't have any complaints with it. It's definitely a good truck, priced very well for the market that it is and the competitors and what's available. Really just boils down to what your personal preference is. But I will say with this ZR2, I think it stepped up the game compared to the TRD off-road, compared to the Pro 4X, even with the Ford Ranger and the Tremor, which I haven't been able to check out yet. This seems to be the best so far as far as the features that it has. Now, I'm not taking this off the pavement, of course, but it looks like it's going to be extremely capable from the factory as it sits, which I think is a huge plus being the ZR2, being a truck to go off-road. You can take this and you really don't even have to do anything. Maybe do a rear bumper just to get a little bit better of a departure angle. But aside from that, it's built for off-road. It's built to daily drive. It's a really good blend of both. That's going to wrap it up though for this 2023 Chevrolet Colorado ZR2. Once again, huge shout out to Randy Marion Chevrolet for providing this mid-sized truck for me today. Check out their website, link down below. Give the video a huge thumbs up. Consider smashing that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.